First Chronicles chapter 11. That's where we are at today. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Um, thank you so much for always listening. Um, we would like to know if this podcast um, is, you know, blessing you in one way or another. If it's speaking to you in one way or another, let us know. Like the videos below. You can comment. You can chat um, with Wakeji and just let her know. Um, what is it inspiring you? Have you found the first 10 chapters of First Chronicles? We've done 10 chapters of First Chronicles. Is it the first time you're reading this book? Have you read it before? Um, let us know. Just interact with us, converse with us in whichever way, um, and we'll be blessed together. We thank God for his word. We thank God that he avails his word to us in a language we can understand. Um, and we never will ever want to take the word of God for granted. Uh, we always have to come to it with our hearts open because God always uses his word to speak to us. Um, he uses his word to encourage you. Uh, he uses his word to direct you. He uses his word to, um, you know, inspire you and sometimes to correct you and rebuke you so that we can walk, uh, you and I can walk together in righteousness, in seeking him. Chapter 10, yesterday was that kind of a chapter. It was a strong rebuke because we were looking at how Saul lived his life and he died um, in disobedience to God. Um, and that's the way the word of God is balanced. Like we can't always come to it to seek, you know, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. We have also to be reminded, yes, you can do all things through Christ, but you need to live right. Um, the commissioning call from heaven is that we need to be holy just as like just like God is holy. And let's never forget that. Uh, in our pursuits, in our day-to-day, -day, let's never forget um, that at the end of the day, the call is for you and I to be holy. We can achieve all the things we are achieving. We can pursue all the things we are pursuing. But if we are not living to be right with God, to be holy, to learn to come to God every morning and be like, set my heart right with you. Show me the things I did yesterday that were not right before you so that I can correct my way, so that I can walk before you in righteousness. Listen, um, let's never ever dump that down. Let's never um, just be the people who go to the word of God to listen to the good vibes. No, the Bible is not good vibes. These are God vibes and God vibes come with all that balance. There's correction, there's encouragement, there's rebuke, there's inspiration. That's the balance that we have to look for. So um, taking us back to chapter 10 yesterday, but today we're in chapter 11. I'm going to try and be quick with this chapter because it's heavy um, and amazing. Chapter 11 verse 3 is where I want us to begin. So may God speak to you. May God speak to me. Um, verse 11, uh, verse 3 of chapter 11 says this. With, when all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, he made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel, as the Lord has promised through Samuel. I liked this verse because imagine a promise that was made so long ago, many years ago, comes to fulfillment in one verse, right? Um, I remember when I, we were doing the book of Joshua, um, and I did the book of Joshua in this, um, you know, podcast, Reflections mm -hmm. by Wakeji. And I remember that it's just one verse that said, and the Lord gave the children of Israel the promised land. You know, today, that's the same heart we are finding here in verse, in verse 3 of chapter 11. Just like that, the Bible says, as the Lord had promised, you know, David, they anointed David king over Israel as the Lord had promised through Samuel. It sealed it's happened, it's come to pass, right? The promise of God came to pass just like that. And I think I see the power of God's faithfulness here. That God promised David, we were not there when he made the promise. Nobody, you know, like God does not need anyone to keep him, to keep him accountable for the promises he's made. He will bring them to pass. His way, his time, but he will bring them to pass. So easily we are just seeing David has become king. He's been anointed king, right? Um, verse, 
verse 3 is a testament. It's an encouragement to you and I. It's a testimony to you and I. The promises that God has made to you, they will come to pass. One day you will walk into that promise. One day you will see it come to pass. One day you will live in that promise that God made years ago. He doesn't need us to keep him accountable. He only needs us to live in obedience, to stick with him, and for sure we will see the promises of God come to pass. I pray that that encourages you today. In verse 9 of chapter 11, we see something else. And we see um, verse 9 says, And David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him right um and and that i found also to be such a strong testimony and an encouragement for you and i to do life with god if you're really thinking about this chapter as a as a continuation from chapter 10 yani it's like in chapter 10 we are seeing the cost of disobedience in chapter 11 we are seeing the cost of obedience things are just unfolding for david he's moving from um you know running away and being battled by 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 Saul and now we're just seeing the guy has been crowned king and then in verse 9 we're coming here and it says and david became more and more powerful why because God was with him, right? Because God was with him. This is an encouragement for you and I to just to learn to do life with God, right? We will see the promises of God come to be, and then we will see God establishing us in the things that he calls us to, just because we are with him. I pray that that encourages you today. As we continue in this chapter, um, the rest of the chapter brings to light some of the greatest men you will ever read about. David's mighty men, David's mighty warriors. Yeah, um, You really cannot get the fullness of this story until you read about this man in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. So I'm going to take us all the way back to 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse... Um, verse 1 and 2 of First Samuel ch chapter 22 says this, David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers uh, and father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him and he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. The message version says, So David got away and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and other associ others associated with his family heard where he was, um, they came down and joined him. Not only that, but all who were down on their luck came around. Losers and vagrants and misfits of all sorts. David became their leader. There were about 400 in all. So this chapter gives us an illustration of the kind of men that we are now meeting in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, right? The guys who joined David then, the Bible calls them that they were in distress, they were discontented with life, they were in debt. The message version is harsher, it's called them losers, they were vagrants and misfits of all sorts. But by the time we are coming to um, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, these men are being addressed as the mighty men of David. And when you read through, I really encourage you to read through. You're going to listen to some of the things they did and you're like, these guys were crazy. They really were crazy. Yeah. Um, and and, and <clears throat> I don't know why I keep saying chapter 12 <clears throat> when it's chapter 11. These guys were really crazy when you read out what they're doing um, in First Chronicles chapter 11. Um, there's a guy called Joshua Beam uh, in verse 11. Uh, and he raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed in one encounter. There's another guy called Eliezer, right? Um, him and David defended and struck down Philistines, and the Lord brought a great victory. They, the, the Philistines attacked, all the men fled, David and Eliezer remained. And David and Eliezer fought the Philistines until they killed all the men, and they defended the country against them, right? There's another guy called Abishai. Yeah, he raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed, so he became as famous as the three. There's a guy called Benaiah. He struck down Moab's two mighty warriors, 
And he also went into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And he struck down an Egyptian who's, who was five cubits tall, although the Egyptian had a spear like a weaver's rod in his hand. Benaiah went against him with a club and he snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Listen to this. These guys are insane. These guys are crazy. But when we hear them beginning, they're called losers. They're called vagrants. They're called misfits. They were in debt. They were in distress. These guys that are now being called the mighty men of David. What happened to them? What is this in-between process that changed them from being losers and vagrants and misfits in distress, discontent, in debt, to the point where they became mighty men? That's a question that you and I should really ask ourselves. And we should ask ourselves this question because the only thing that I can account for is that these guys learned something when they spent time with David. This guy has picked something from David. Maybe it was his dedication to God. Maybe it was his humility in, in, in the time when Saul was pursuing against him. Maybe it was the fact that this guy had stepped in courage and trusted God to kill Goliath. And so because David killed Goliath, killed a giant, and they knew this guy had done that, they themselves were liberated to step out and do great things because they saw if there is a God that can do this through David, maybe the same God can do it through me, right? And one thing that I'd like to encourage you is that, you know, one thing when you step out and win the wars and the fights in your life, it becomes encouraging to the people around you to do the same. Every time you step out against your fears, against the things that are being thrashed to you and thrown to you, every time you trust God to fight your battles to the end, gives permission to other people to learn the same from you. These guys did greater feats than David. If you really think about Beniah, what business did this guy have to follow a lion into a pit? What business did this guy have to kill two Moabite warriors, giants? He killed them alone right? He followed an Egyptian giant and then the guy showed up in a fight with a club, you know, with a club, with a fimbo, and then he snatched the guy's spear and killed him using it. Alone, fighting for the fame and the glory of God, the God of Israel. I feel like the men became who they became. They moved from being losers, vagrants, misfits to become mighty warriors because they had an example of a mighty warrior. They had an example of a man who stood before a giant and said, you cannot abuse my God and I look at you like that. And because David stepped and did great things, he gave permission to them to step out of their fears and step out of their loser mentality and just be like, we're going to show up for God. So I want you to think about your life. Wherever it is that God has given you a platform, maybe you're a leader in business, Maybe you run your own business and you have employees. If you're a leader in business, maybe you have a team that you work with. Maybe you work in a church or you run an organization. Whatever it is that you've been given, I just want to tell you that when you show up for God, for the glory of God, you never know who you are giving permission to rise up so they can show up for God as well. When you really step out and do the things God has called you to do with integrity, with a purity of heart, and with courage, the courage that God gives you for the glory of God. There may be somebody who can be classified as a loser or a vagrant or a misfit, who can look at you and be like, because so-and-so has done this, let me show up for my God as well. This chapter is really, really rich. And it's so full. And we can go on talking about it and talking about it. But let me just summarize it to us. Number one, God's promise for your life will come to pass. Just walk with him. We saw that in verse three. Number two, walk with God so he can establish you. We see that in verse six when God says, and verse nine, David became more and more powerful because God was with him. And then as God establishes you, take note of the people around you. 
Do the things God has called you to do with excellence, with integrity, with passion, with courage. Go hard after the things God has called you to do. Because in your doing that and in slaying the giants in your life, you never know who you're giving permission for them to step out and do the same. Courage lends to courage. When we are courageous, we give other people permission to be courageous. When we are bold, we give other people permission to be bold. When we are relentless in our pursuit, we give other people permission to be relentless in their pursuit. So whose destiny might you unlock by you being dedicated, passionate, and courageous about your own? That's something for you to think about. God bless you. See you in chapter 12. Bye.